the 1990s X-Men animated show. This is uh, season four, episodes two and three. Thoughts. These episodes are A Deal with the Devil and Sanctuary Part One. So, spoilers for the show leading up to and including these episodes and other episodes I love. In the description box, the top link is to donate to the SAG After Strikers. An extremely important strike. You know, please give as much as you can. And the um, there are some links to videos that help explain why it's such an important strike. So let's dive into a deal with the devil. So, yeah, I love how much some of these comic book characters can survive. Omega Red was frozen. They had to dig. It was it was difficult to even find him, but they they thaw him up, and there he is, a threat yet again. And they claim that they can make him human. Now, ultimately, that doesn't happen in this episode. Wolverine seems certain that it can't happen at all. So, it is possible that on some level Omega Red knew that and was just playing along. Yeah, I guess so, yeah, because the, you know, the, it's not that he wouldn't have been made human after the... Or did he change his mind because Wolverine... No, he was probably always going to. <clears throat> and they put liquid nitrogen in an implant in his body. I love comic books. And, yeah, he demands, you know, Wolverine and Storm join him because he wants revenge, which he, of course, doesn't say at the time. And, yeah, I mean, American spy agencies do sometimes work with former or even current enemies. And sometimes it that does go really badly. And, yeah, Omega Red, once they get into the submarine pretty quickly regains control of the situation and the the yeah yeah you know removes the the implant and yeah sends 15 sends missiles at the 15 largest cities and yeah you know the the air force guy says if we had been warned we would be better prepared, and that's another, you know, sometimes American military and spy agencies will, you know, be overly arrogant and not prepare properly for a situation. A lot of tension this episode, really, really love, like, the threat of the, the missiles, you know, I'd say maybe half the episode we, we spend just terrifying one of these missiles is actually gonna, you know they're not like oh you know <clears throat> maybe some no it's it's a pretty clear threat and rogue gets so f fed up with the situation she dives down and like rips part of the submarine just wow she's such a badass and yeah the submarine sinks very deep but Omega Red remains alive. Holy crap. Season 4, Episode 3, Sanctuary, Part 1. So, yeah, we have indeed reached Asteroid M. It was hinted at in, an, er, in a Season 3 episode. So, yeah, now that we're in Season 4, they're actually doing that storyline. So cool. And, yeah... I, I really appreciate the the really honest depiction of slavers. You know, the the free Genosian leader, a representative, I guess, not leader, says, you know, he takes issue with the word slavery. Mutants are a resource to be managed like everything else. And that is the way that slavers sometimes dress it up. You know, like, you know you're dealing with a slaver if they're talking about human beings as some sort of resource to be, you know, to, that, that's how you justify the, the, what's the word? 
you know, doing terrible things. Because, you know, after all, like, resources are to be used in the most beneficial way. You know, but if you say, I want that human being to do exactly what I say, receive very little compensation, I want to be able to treat them extremely badly, you know, that sounds bad. Which is also why slavers have routinely dehumanized the people they enslave. And yeah, Magneto does some villain stuff again, so that's very cool to see. And I, I always appreciate when, you know, he's he's talking about this, you know, all these things that were done to mutants, and you can really understand where he's coming from, and somehow he has clips from earlier episodes, like, there's no way, some of this stuff, there's no way anybody filmed this the way that it's, you know, but, yeah. It's a way to save money, you know, so they don't have to animate this stuff from other angles. And we see Apocalypse and Mr. Sinister listen to Magneto, who, you know, yeah, not the, not the most ridiculous, uh, you know, message broadcasted to the, the entire world all at once. To, today we have a lot of those. And, yeah, there's this hint that maybe Gambit is considering Asteroid M, and by the end of this first part, it's not quite clear if he really is going to try to stay there. You know, I'm guessing we'll get an answer by the end of part two. And, yeah, the, the idea that Asteroid M is only for mutants, of course, appeals both to mutants who want to live in peace and, you know, non-human, non-mutant humans who want to, to you know, live without. And, and the idea of, like, a specific place that's only for, you know, the, there's um, black nationalists who seek that and you you can really understand why and it's it's very frustrating when white people including white leftists uh, say oh you know black nationalists they're the exact same as white national no they're just educate yourself um but yeah that you know that's one thing you also have conservatives talking about you know having a specific or white conservatives i mean specific you know, yeah, separating the the conservative states from the rest of America and such. And Genosha attempts to arrest Magneto, you know, for freeing slaves. And, yeah, very cool to see the resistance movement, who turns out to be, you know, more extremist than Magneto. And Sentinels. It's been a little while since we had Sentinels, so very cool to see them again. And, uh, yeah, you know, now Magneto is being recharged by Cortez. And, you know, Xavier fears that Magneto will come to depend on this like a drug. Not, not one that gives him back his legs, but also removes his telepathy. Like, I love that movie, but that was pretty awkward writing. And, yeah, you know, Corsair hates the idea of any human on Asteroid M. And, you know, at first it seems like, you know, the attack was them acting out of fear. You know, Xavier always trying to understand that, you know... But it turns out they were acting out of self-defense because a missile was launched. And I appreciate, you know, most of the audience have guessed that it must have been Cortez. So I appreciate that they don't spend forever revealing that that's indeed the, the case. And... Yeah, we get some backstory for Amelia and Xavier. And, you know, he 
Let's say, yeah, you know, basically he lost her because he will, he wanted to focus on the X Men, which, you know, I appreciate that they the the show makes it clear, you know, sometimes, you know, there there are sacrifices made for the greater good, and also you have this element of, you know, it's not that she was a bad person but she had a different idea of how you know what was better for mutants and yeah you know there are there are people who feel extremely strongly about a cause who end up you know disagreeing over some important tenet of it and a lot of them end up cutting contact with each other from each other, whatever. And yeah, you know, she says Magneto may have built Asteroid M, but you, Xavier, made it necessary. And yeah, so Cortez, once, you know, Magneto knows that it was him, you know, yeah, he, he zaps the strength out of Magneto that he had given him. You know, Magneto hadn't been able to recharge as it were on his own and you know he says you have more value to the cause as a martyr and that's the thing with these some of these extremist groups you know I mean essentially what we're witnessing is a coup and that does happen sometimes and yeah so <clears throat> Cortez does the classic thing of you know young help help and then once the x-men arrive he's like it was them you know so you know cuz like obviously if he just said the x-men did this someone would be like but you're the one standing where magneto disappeared you know but if the x-men are standing right there you know it's that classic thing of you know trying to help someone who's been attacked and then a witness places you on the scene, not realizing you're there to help. So, yeah, uh, another two really great episodes. I don't think I have much more to say. I appreciate, right, uh, Deal with the Devil acknowledges that America has sometimes worked with, you know, during World War II, like we, you know, We'd like for that to not be the case, and some people want to try to erase that, you know, out of the like, you know, not not teach that part of history. But yeah, America did work with the Soviets during World War II, and it turned out to be a mistake. You know, I, I forget exactly who. I'm not always good with names, but there was someone who had realized at the time, and I think even tried to talk, like. I guess both Americans and British out of working with the Soviet Union, but I guess Churchill and let's see, was it Truman? The the leaders at the time just you know they were thinking we don't want to risk more of our men, and yeah you know because of that a lot of people have suffered that didn't have to because. These people were, you know, only thinking in the short term. Like, you can appreciate, you know, okay, they didn't want, you know, their men to suffer, but there was a war on, you know, you don't always, you're not always able to avoid the, the yeah, the negative aspects of war once you're already in a war. And, and for sure, like, the Nazis had to be stopped. That was, you know, no question about that. You know, today they don't have an entire nation, but they still need to be stopped. You know, Nazi Germany had to be stopped back then. Neo-Nazis have to be stopped today. But the... It was doable without the Soviet Union. And, you know, as soon as World War II ended, the, the conflict between the West and the Soviet Union began... And, yeah, uh, you know, so, so yeah, I, I quite appreciate that, you know, so, the, yeah, A Deal with the Devil aired in 96, so, let's see, The Wall, The Wall fell in 89, and the Soviet Union collapsed 
in 91. So, yeah, it was very recent, you know. And I think that might be what I have to... Oh, right, and, and Omega Red is, the, like, very, very destructive in a way that isn't necessarily, like, you, you know, you could look at what he's doing and be like, how's this going to accomplish any of his goals? And, you know, okay, so obviously part of it is comic book Saturday morning cartoon supervillainy, you know. But there have been Russian leaders who have done extremely self-destructive things. Stalin was insistent that Stalingrad not be lost to the Nazis. And it's actually the, the amount, like millions died there. You know, it's, it's truly horrific. And it was literally just because two powerful men who had no one, you know, there was no one in the immediate vicinity that were able to stop them, kept insisting, no, that place has a specific name, you know, I want it. And just, yeah, so, so you know, again, like, not saying that a seven-year-old needs to be taught about the horrors of the Eastern Front, this is a good, like, primer for that. And I think that might... And, you know, the show does also feature positive Russians. You know, uh, Colossus and... Um, I can't believe I'm blanking on her name, but in the comics she becomes Magic, the new mutant. Uh, you know, so the... the um, yeah. Um, I think that is... Everything. Uh, I feel like there's just one more thing, but I can't quite place it. So, oh right, right, yes, the 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 um, ah, what's it called? In Sanctuary Part One, you know, we see this. The um, the resistance movement, you know, we realized they've become very extreme, very radical, radicalized, and you can understand why. You know, whenever they see a human being, they think they're the slave drivers. You know, so so yeah, you know, Cortez thinks there is no way to have peace with with humans, and just yeah and and that's right you know i mentioned already so the, you know basically it's a coup a number of coups happen when an extreme leader is perceived by someone else to not be quite extreme enough so again very important to to point that out you know um yeah i think that might you know, yeah, as a, as a quick, you know, um, a very recent example, you know, for, for many years, the, the, you know, there were, the, the conservative, the modern conservative movement have had, you know, you, you can, there's a, a relatively short list of people who've had tremendous influence. And one of the, you know, near the top of the list is Mitch McConnell. And then Trump came along and was more extreme, and now you have a bunch of conservatives who don't, you know, now now they hate Mitch McConnell because of like, did he do more than one thing that was like slightly not supportive of Trump? <clears throat> I mean, once Trump got power, before that he was eager to criticize, as many conservatives were. And then they fell in line because there's a strong strain of fascism in modern conservatism. They're they're more obsessed with power than doing the right thing. But but yeah, you know, decades of Mitch McConnell's, you know, it's not like it's not good work, but he did, you know, he he 
I don't know if you want to say he accomplished. I guess it's more that he prevented left wingers from accomplishing very much. But you know, he's he's been at it for a while. Trump has identified as Democrat for most of his adult life, but conservatives love him right now. So, yeah, he's you know they 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 side with him even though he was utterly incompetent. You know, I like to say about Trump, no matter what your values are, you should hate him. If if you agree with the the things that he said he wanted to accomplish, you should hate him for becoming president instead of just the the press secretary or something. You know, yeah, a lot of conservatives love hearing him talk like he himself does, but he was completely unprepared for the office and you know i'm relieved that he was so you know he he was like i i wish he had never become president because he did manage to kill a lot of people through his incompetence which you know i i i don't use the those words lightly but he was in charge you know he kept stopping things that would have saved people and refusing to do things that would have saved people even though everything indicated that he should just you know do the right thing but yeah i'm relieved that he wasn't able you know like reagan was much more efficient in carrying out conservative policy a lot of what reagan has done you know still is you know all these decades you know what 40 years later still you know affecting millions of americans it's you know no one has been able to undo it uh, so far but yeah you know now now a bunch of them support trump over mcconnell despite this disparity in how long they've been working for the the party and how effective they've been and there's even a number of people who've moved on from Trump because they don't think he's extreme enough anymore. You know, he eventually did say that you should get the vaccine. And he immediately, you know, he immediately was like, no, 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 I mean, I mean, you have your rights, you know. But yeah, he got booed at one of his own rallies. It's just, I, f I think it was one of his own rallies. Certainly it was a conservative crowd. Like, you know, although I'd like to think that there's not a lot of left-leaning crowds who would have booed you should get the vaccine but you know so so yeah the, the and and there was like I don't know if it's still around it's been a while since I last heard mention of it but uh, what, what did they call it again um, ultra maga maybe um, uh, let's see I think the let's see. Um No, I guess, oh wait, was it Dark Maga, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, ah, you know what, I'm, I'm not 100%. But there was, you know, I forget exactly what they're called, but there was a movement that said that Trump wasn't extreme enough. You know, and I, I'm not 100% sure how big a part, uh, you know, and, the, like, thankfully they're often quite incompetent. They're not very likely to get huge amounts of political power. You know, the, the most of the conservatives who've been able to, to get power are not the, the most recent, you know, really just completely insane brands, you know, a lot of the conservatives in power are extremely damaging, but they're people who managed to gain power 
you know, decades ago and have been holding on to it ever since. You know, it's not... So, so yeah. Anyway, um... Yeah, you know, ex extremist movements, and MAGA was extremist from the very start. You know, let's not forget the f literally the first thing Trump said was, uh, you know, all Mexicans, you know, yeah, Mexicans are bringing drug, rape, and, and crime to America, and some, I assume, are good people. Thanks, that's, that's, um, yeah. So, the, the, um, you know, yeah, increasing extremism and at least attempted coups, I suppose, depending on who you ask, some would probably say that Ron DeSantis is attempting to, you know, I, I find it fascinating that anyone was ever, like, ever looked at Ron DeSantis and thought he just really likes Trump rather than he realizes Trump is really popular with the base he's gonna try to fashion himself as the the next Trump and try to gain power and Trump ever completely as as always just bafflingly unaware of the fact that I would, I would propose nobody likes him for him. The only reason anybody likes Trump is for the power he has, might have, or, you know, the, the, actually, yeah, I guess those, are, you know, and, you know, for a while it was monetary power, more recently it's political power and his sway over the, the, the base, but yeah, it's it's incredible. Like after a lifetime of people sucking up to him to to get a slice of the pie, they still like he's he's still not aware that that's what it is. Like he still thinks people like him for him, which you know if he had. A smidgen of an appealing personality. I guess that wouldn't be out of the question. But yeah, that's everything that I had to say about these episodes. So, catch you again tomorrow. Make mine marble.